Yes. And we have some that are 14, right? Is anybody out there? Okay. Um, think about this. I'm going to cut an 8 ounce steak. It's going to be about that thick, right? I need it to be that thick so that I can grill it to medium rare. That's what the customer typically wants, medium rare. All right. If it weighs 15 pounds, it's bigger, yes? If I cut it that thickness, is it going to weigh 8 ounces? No, it's going to be weighing more than 8 ounces. My crew is going to cut them that thick because they have to grill them. So they're not going to cut them thinner. Every time they go over eight ounces, it's like me taking money and throwing it in the trash. Do you understand that? Every time the portion is bigger than you decided it should be, you're taking money out of your pocket and throwing it in the trash. Is your crew going to say, Chef, we cut them too big? No. No. Is the customer going to say, oh my goodness, I ordered an 8-ounce steak and you gave me a 10-ounce steak? <laughs> no. They're not going to say anything. They're going to be like, wow, I'll take half home. All right? So how do you get the exact size you want? One, you could just order steaks already cut. But you're going to pay more. Two, you get the smaller one. Right? Well, how do you get the smaller one? You're on the phone to the purveyor and you're saying, I need them 10 to 12 ounces, 10 to 12 pounds, not 15, 17, 18 pounds. Remember, the purveyor sells weight. They want to sell more. So they're going to sell you the bigger ones. So the only way to get the smaller ones is for you to say, I want this size, I want that size. Now, there's another way around any of this. So the purveyor says, I can't get the small ones. The cattle are bigger today. Blah, blah, blah. You know how they are. Now you know how they are. Right? So you say, okay, send me a big one. Great. And the purveyor's like, yahoo! I've got Schneller. He doesn't know anything. What do I do? I trim this all the way down. Split it down the middle, and then I make a thicker medallion, and I tie it. Remember your tied thing? Mm -hmm. Did anybody leave the string on? No. Good. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I tie that steak, and I grill it, and I serve seven ounces, six ounces, and the customer goes, "This is." delightful and I can still eat the dessert and you didn't throw any money in the trash and the purveyor thinks wow they're dumb they don't know anything about me and in reality you know a lot about me because you split it in half so that's what some places are doing they're dividing it in half and making a medallion with the oversized cuts there might be another reason I want the bigger ones I, I'm, I'm doing a, a party, a wedding, a function, and I'm cutting it much thinner. You know, if I'm doing a wedding, a party, and I, they have the fish, they have the chicken, they have the meat, they have the veg, right? Um, the meat I can cut thinner, and it looks bigger on the plate, even though it's thin, and it covers more plate, which makes it look nice. So that's another reason why I might want the bigger one. All right? All right, let's get to it. When we trim this, we're going to trim it like this first. We're going to flip it. All right? On the bottom side, we're going to see where the bone was connected, right? Remember I had the bone on there? Yeah. Right? So this is the 13th rib channel. I need to clean that out first. You're not denuding it. Don't take off every bit of fat. That it doesn't need to be completely clean. But what needs to come off is wherever there was bone. So right here, there's bone connective tissue. Do 
ear. What's the bone? Here's the bone. See that pink? That's bone connective tissue. Right here, bone connective. See how tough that is? This is actually a piece of the bone. When I boned it out, I got really close. Bone connective. Let's see yours. Let's see one of those. Bone connected, bone connected, bone connected, bone connected, bone connected. Remember yesterday when I cut it far into the sirloin? <laughs> Look. Look at that. <laughs> we got robbed. <laughs> Again? Remember I showed you that yesterday? Nah. I told you they were going to look like that. I didn't cut this one. This came this way. All right, so clean out the bone connective. That's your first step. Do you see it? It's pink, like this. Not all this stuff, that's okay. Just the bone connective. One, there's the 13th rib. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, possibly. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six on this. All right, once you have that, then this edge here, there's a lot of fat here. Just bevel it off a little bit. You're not cleaning all the fat off. Just angle and trim lightly. You're gonna leave some of that fat on. Do not try to take all the fat off, please. Then you flip it. Now, this end, this is called the vein end. The rougher end that was attached to the sirloin, the bulging out end, all right? You're gonna take your uh, strip line and face the vein end towards you. Vein end towards you, north-south, not east-west. This is east-west, no. North-south, yes. Take your slicer knife and push this fat off away from you, not towards you. Trim this fat down like so, away from you. Now you're gonna get this fat all the way down to about an eighth of an inch. You can use your slicer, this is your slicer. <laughs> right? The slicer is nice because it's a little bit flexible. And you'll know when you're close because it gets soft. Or you start to see the meat and then it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> But then you can do this. That's called what? Barding. 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 You didn't learn about barding? Yes. I know you did. You had McHugh? Yes. Yeah. I like to eat like band aid. Huh? I said I like to eat band aid. Yourself? Whenever I talk about food, burn, I never burn, talk burn, about stick band Stick that on it. <laughs> Meat ring. Married to the wrong finger. I do. <laughs> now I switched, right? You see me switch to my smaller knife? You can do that too. That's fine. You don't have to just use the slicer, but you should use the slicer initially to get it down. All of this is going to be waste, right? So you need to keep track of all of your waste. You're gonna weigh your waste as unusable trim. You subtract it from your original weight. Now we're getting softer. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's too soft, a little bit too close right there. Poke it with your fingers. Okay, good. Good. So you're leaving a layer on for protection. Now, the next thing, one more step. Along this edge, you will see like a collagen band right there. You see that collagen band? Oh, yeah. Collagen band right there. Right there. All right. Now, the collagen band is thickest up along the top. It extends over the whole thing, but we're not going to denude the whole thing. We're just going to clean from this collagen band along the top for about two inches, like this. I make a little light score line. That, that doesn't cut into the meat. It's just a marker. Just make a marker. Do not cut the meat here. Don't go like this. It has happened in the past. People are sleepy. They're not listening. This is not you. You are awake and aware, and you're not going to cut the meat. Then you're going to take this, create a tag, and go upwards, upwards, right, like that. Create some tension. You have tension. Push the knife through, nice and smooth, along that line. What do you do with this? Oh, it's collagen. Put it in your stock. I don't throw out anything. Neither did McHugh. Plastic wrap? <laughs> <laughs> So you're going to clean this out. You got that? You're going to clean off this collagen band. Try to, you can do repetitive, so you, you can go over and over. Try not to go deep. Now, one more thing. Along this edge, you're going to have a lip. There's a, a natural seam. See that? There's a natural seam here. And you're not going to go in that seam. Along this edge, you don't want to go in the seam here. You're not going to take this piece off. You leave that on. Even though there's collagen here. Right? Take what you can see on the surface, but don't go into this seam. Don't go in there. So that's the that's the strip line. Now it's trimmed. Not completely denuded. There's still some collagen, right? Now we're almost ready to tie it. All of this we consider waste, even though we might use that. There's no value on it. Then you have the vein end, right? And this one is discolored. You're gonna take the vein end. Here you can denude it a little bit. Trim it all the way down. And then you're gonna square it off, like so. Maybe a half an inch. Square it off. All right, so it's nice and even, maybe a little more. 
take one, then another. This is your usable trim. That's why I change people so expensive. All right. This you could use for grind. You might maybe make a little slicing thing with it. That might be your family meal. I love my family, so they might get this. <laughs> or I make a dish, steak tartar, sorry family, you get beans, <laughs> and rice, <laughs> and leftover soup from three days ago. You should just do like a $20 New York strip Huh? The chef I worked for, he would put it on as a New York strip burger. Yeah. 20 bucks. There you go. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. exactly. Grind the ends and put it on as a New York strip burger. Perfect application. You sold it. You know what I mean? I We've taken it here at the school. We've taken it further. And we've sliced it and put it in the pho, in the soup. You know, in the bottom of the bowl. Um, you could do it as a Philly cheesesteak, a New York Strip Philly cheesesteak, anything like that. Any way that you can sell it for money. But there you go. All right, now you're going to tie this for our party. You're going to tie half, and your partner's going to tie the other half. All right, so you tie your half like this. And when you tie it, no fingers. Inch and a half. How are you going to know it's an inch and a half? You're going to measure it. You got a ruler. This is an inch and a half. So I'm a little bit narrow, right? I gotta go a tiny bit wider. Inch and a half. What's that hole? I filled it in. Why an inch and a half? Because that's what you want to do. Because that's two portions. That way I know exactly how many portions I have on this thing. Alright? So when you tie it nice and snug where I can't get my fingers in. Uh, nice and tight, all the knots along this edge. Remember how to do the knot? Under, up, around, cross the top string over the bottom, one, cross the top string over the bottom, two, don't pull it tight, don't go like this, let it go, just let it go, and then cinch push on the knot, and then tie it off. Or you can go like that. Six. Not that, really. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, cinch, lock. Draw. Okay. All right, so that's your side looking good, right? Now your partner goes. You're, you're cleaning up already, you're doing other stuff, you're starting the usable trim, and they do this. And what are you gonna say? That looks awful. That looks awful. Fixing. What am I gonna say? Zero. I'm not gonna use that language. <laughs> 
I'm going to say that's too loose. And I'm going to say, oh, this side is perfect. This side is horrible. Well, I guess you both get a C. Because, you know, half of it is good. All right? Is that how it's going to work? Peer pressure. It's an excellent teaching tool. <laughs> Make sure they're both nice. I'm sure they will be. All right? Check them. I'll check to see if they're tight enough. I'm going to come around. I'm going to go like this. All right? So do you understand the process that we're doing? Yes, 